Hi there, this is Tamara Rubin, Let's Safe Mama, TamaraRubin.com, Let's Safe Mama.com. This is an XRF instrument, and I'm here today to talk to you about Snopes. Um, in 2016, Snopes wrote an article that if you don't know anything about my work, the article appears to discredit my work, and the article is bullshit. And the interesting thing is Snopes has since been called out for trying to um, grab onto other people's viral traffic. So basically in 2016, I had written several posts about lead in vintage Pyrex and um, Snopes noticed that they were going viral during what was leading up to the holiday season. So they decided they needed to do a post about my work. And unfortunately their post is incorrect and unethical and wrong. Um, it just blatantly BS and they have never retracted it. We've, I've exchanged, um, emails with them about this. I've actually in person confronted the, uh, founder of Snopes and there's videos on my website of that confrontation where he just completely deflects the conversation, doesn't ha have any, um, response to the fact that he has published false information on Snopes and refuses to take it down. So right here, I wanted to show you all in response to that. I'm going to be making a few videos about this. This is an XRF instrument, a, a Niton XL3T. It, it knew these things cost about $35,000 when they were made. The brand new version of this instrument is about $50,000 with all the software installed. Um, this instrument is used by the Consumer Product Safety Commission. It has, um, it's not the same $10,000 instrument used by paint hazard assessors. Those are radioactive source instruments. This is a non-radioactive source instrument. It specifically has software and hardware designed for testing uh, lead in consumer goods. And it does so immediately and it does so accurately. It's the, the results from this instrument, using this instrument are science-based replicable and, and and accurate and so that the um the consumer product safety commission uses this as a tool to screen consumer goods for lead and other toxicants that might be harmful to children so there's no way any bs around the work that i do it's legit it's science and i'm trained and certified in using this instrument and yes it's only a one day certification but i've been doing this for um almost 12 years now something like that so what i wanted to show you is how this works so here is um a cup and I'm gonna try and do this in the screen. Um, this is, I believe this is not Pyrex. Let me just see the brand. This is a Hazel Atlas mug, but it's the same thing as Pyrex. It's, it's got the white milk glass with a co color paint on the outside. And if you hold it up to the light, um, you can usually see variations in the color. Um, I wish I could capture this better on film here, but th when you hold it up with a light shining right into it, there's a lot of paint missing. And it's the microparticulate lead in that paint that's missing, that's the problem. And the other important thing for you to know is that back in 2017, there was a study done in Plymouth, England that said that yes, there is lead paint on the outside of these vintage and new um, glass uh, glassware items and that this is potentially a significant problem um, because it can be an exposure source for lead and cadmium and other heavy metals, arsenic um, among them, antimony, um, uh, th that could be ingested, ingested, especially given their functional food use items that are used in your kitchen. So um, I'm gonna test this I'm gonna try and find a way to do this. Let me just see if I can change my camera angle real quick. Um, I'm gonna test this right here. So um, here's the instrument. This is how it works. I'm testing it. And when I do a blog post, I do quite a bit of testing. I test multiple times to confirm the results. I do long tests so that I can be sure of the results and the range of um, the margin of error. But I'm just gonna show you just with a 14 second test, which that was. Let's go back on me. Sorry about the wiggly things. I wish I had a someone filming for me. Um, if you, you can see, that's that quick test result. These are the test results and they say, it has 18,000 parts per million lead. And the important thing to know is that lead in consumer goods is considered unsafe for children at levels of 90 parts per million and up. And it also has 1,140 parts per million cadmium, which is toxic at 40 parts per million and up. And it also um, has zinc, selenium, titanium, zirconium, and platinum. And those are all the metals. 
uh, tested in consumer goods mode with a scientific instrument. The interesting thing is that this will also test positive using a reactive agent home test kit. So the fact that Snopes says it doesn't have lead is total bullshit. And you just need to know that you can't trust the media, especially when it comes to consumer goods, and you can't trust Snopes. Um, they've written about my work four times. In two of the articles, they've used me as a, as a expert uh, source saying, oh, look, because Tamara Rubin said this, it's true. And two of the articles, they've tried, tried to impugn my work. Um, I just wanna show you this one. This is a Corel piece, similar. It's a mug, similar to the mixing bowls. And I'm going to test the white glass on the bottom, which is um, unpainted in this case. And what they do in the Snopes article that's just so ridiculous is they say, look, it, the inside of the bowl doesn't test positive with a reactive agent home test kit. Well, that's, that's ridiculous because it doesn't matter about the inside. It's the outside we're talking about, but also the inside is also positive. So this is the, the test result on the white is, um, that's the milk glass of the, of the dish is 345 parts per million lead and 18 parts per million cadmium in that particular case. And then I'm just gonna do one more, which, um, just to show you. Um, I've got a Pyrex Cinderella bowl here. And again, I'll try and shift the camera just a little bit so you can see I'm actually testing this thing. And I'm gonna test the, um, the white. I'm gonna prop it up on one of these and test the white and show you. I'm, I'm making a video, honey. Um, <coughs> you sound like you have a cold. Yeah, I have And so the, these, um, this one tested 150 parts per million lead in the white glass of this. And um, just testing, testing the exterior paint with a quick test, which is relatively accurate. The longer the test is, the more accurate it is. But just test, doing a quick test. Of, of the exterior paint. It's 189,000 parts per million lead, 1,707 parts per million cadmium, and 11,300 parts per million arsenic. These are all in the exterior paint. And if you, I'm um, just gonna show you these readings right here. There's the arsenic, the lead, cadmium, and arsenic. Um, and lead is considered unsafe in an item intended for use by children at, item, at levels of 90 parts per million and above. And people ask me, well, why is it a problem if it's only on the outside? And that's because people stack these things like this. And the paint on the outside wears off onto the inside of another dish. It's also a problem because, again, you know, when you are using this, you're touching the outside. And I will wash my hands after this video. And using it and touching the outside, the paint wears off onto your hands. And that's why when you, and you should do this at home, but when you hold this up, to the light, you can see the, the paint that's missing from the exterior. Um, and I think that um, that should be enough to hopefully get you to stop using these for food use purposes. Put them in a cabinet, put the cabinet, you know, a glass, a glass cabinet with a lock and don't let children use it uh, or put them in the garage, store them until you decide whether or not you're really concerned about this. But read the study from um, 2017 from England that shows that the lead paint on the outside of these is a concern. And the other thing to know about this is the amount of lead that the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development considers enough lead that it's so hazardous that federal funding will be paid um, to uh, remediate that lead in homes is anything 5,000 parts per million up. I'm filming, filming a video using my phone. Can you stop? Sorry, my kiddo um, is trying to get in, in the picture here. Um, anyway, and so at 5,000 parts per million up, it's toxic enough that it needs to be remediated by federal funding. This is 181,000, 189,000 parts per million lead. Plus it has arsenic and cadmium. There's really no reason for you to use these for food use purposes. All right, that's it. TamaraRubin.com, LeadSafeMama.com. You can find the XRF test results for all the different types of uh, Pyrex and Corning and vintage things on my blog. And when the companies say that they always followed regulatory standards at the time of manufacture and that their items should be considered safe because they follow the standards, the standards weren't the same when these were manufactured. They didn't have the information we have now. They
They didn't know how to make these in a way that was protective of human health. They didn't understand the implications of trace level lead exposure in our environment and how that could harm children and, and even harm adults. So regardless of whether or not they follow the standards at the time of manufacture, that does not mean that these are safe and that does not mean that you should be using them for cooking. TamaRuba.com, Let's Save Mama.com. Thanks for being here.